I'm making this video to show you how to create holes that start on a cylindrical surface using SOLIDWORKS and using the hole wizard and at the same time constraining them so that they land on the center line of the cylindrical feature and can be dimensioned. This is not as easy as it might sound. The steps are um, laid out right here. So the first thing you're going to do is to create a plane tangent to the cylinder or cone. And by the way, you can do this on a conical taper as well. Then you go immediately to the hole wizard. Under the position tab, you're going to select the plane and draw a center line through the origin. This gives you some place that you can snap to so that when you put your holes in, they're lined right up on the center plane. Then you'll select the cylindrical face, place a point, dimension the location, define the type of hole, pat yourself on the back. So I have a version of the handle that you're drawing in um, AEDD250, the mechanical design class. So what we need to do is put a hole over here that's sitting on that surface. I'm going to look at it from the top point of view. And what I need to do first is to create a new reference plane. So I go to Reference Geometry, Plane. When it comes up, it's going to ask me for at least two references. The first reference I'm going to use is just the edge or the side of that cylinder. If I select it, it's going to create a tangent plane for me. You notice it made it down um, below, so it's 90 degrees off. But I do need another reference. So if I go to the second reference, open up the feature tree in the middle that gets popped into the middle, I'm just going to go and find top plane. And I'm going to say I'm going to use this, and I want the plane I'm creating to be parallel to the top plane. So now I have two planes that are parallel to each other, the top plane of the drawing, which goes right down through the middle of the part, and then another plane that is tangent to the outside edge of that cylinder. I accept that. Now I've got a plane I can work with. You do have to make sure that planes are turned on. If you turn them off, you can't see them, so I do want to be able to see it. It's not very large. It's just large enough to cover the area that I want. You can kind of drag that down and then make it a little bit bigger if you want to be able to see it better. Now I'm going to go over to the hole wizard. And in the hole wizard, you'll be asked to create the type of hole and then to define the locations. Well, whatever hole you want, well, we can deal with that later. But suppose I wanted a counterboard hole, countersunk hole. So I want a counterboard hole. I go to the positions and ask me to select the face. I'm going to actually select that plane, even though you can't place the the uh, hole itself on the plane. It has to be on the surface. But I'm going to pick it because what I'd like to be able to do is to draw a center line. And the center line is going to go right down through the middle of the part like that. Now the center line is part of the whole wizard sketch. And a whole wizard does create two sketches. One for the location and one for the shape of the hole being created. Now I'm going to go and put a point using the, uh, just the sketch tools on that center line, locate it, dimension it so that I know how far off the end of the part it is. Um, I'm in the metric system on this and I'll show you another little trick. This is 1.2 inches back from the end. Even though I started a metric drawing, I can type 1.2 and then put the inch mark in and it'll automatically do a conversion for me so it shows up in the right place. Now when I pick the green check for the dimension and get out of that, I can go back to the type and now I can define whatever type I want. So this is a counterboard hole, but if I want it to be a little bit bigger, say a number six, looks like that. Pick OK, and that goes in. And that's a through hole. Probably I wouldn't want a through hole, so I'm going to right click and I'm going to go and change that. So instead of being a uh, through wall hole, I'm going to change it to blind. And I'm just going to make the whole thing about a quarter of an inch deep. Six millimeters, about a quarter of an inch. So now I've got that one feature on there. Now I can go ahead and array it if I want to using a circular array. Circular array asks me the features to pattern. I'm going to select that whole counter bore. Up here under the axis, I'm just going to pick any part of that cylinder. Now I'm going to indicate that I want equal spacing, 360 degrees, and say I want four of these. Pick OK. Now we've got four counterboard holes that are arrayed radially around that part. Well, this technique also works on tapered conical tapers or tapered surfaces. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go back up to the reference geometry, plane, select that surface. The second reference is going to be one of the other planes. But I don't want it to be parallel. I want it to be perpendicular. So I'm going to pick the front plane. And then go over here to perpendicular 
Now, that plane, because it's on a slope, couldn't have been parallel to anything, but it can be perpendicular, and so now it is. And if you take a look at it, it's sitting right on that little sloped area. So I go back over to Whole Wizard. I go to Positions. I'm going to select the plane I just created. I'm going to start by putting a center line that goes right down the middle, goes through the origin. The center line will be black because it's fully defined. I go and look at it now. I can add a point. That point can be anywhere on that line. Pick it. I can put a dimension on it, indicate the dimension from here to here. In this case, we'll make it, say, 20 millimeters. Um, and what's happening is, is on that surface, it's tapered, so it actually is going in at an angle. And I'll go back over to type, and then once again, I'll change it from through all to blind, and we'll make it a 6 millimeter depth. So now you can see I've got, if I cut that in half like so, and look at it from the front, you can see that what it created was holes that are going straight, parallel, uh, perpendicular to that surface, and this one over here, perpendicular to that angled surface going in at an angle. So I have a drilled hole of a given depth that's both counterboard. And in this case, you end up with what looks kind of like a countersink, and that's just because the part itself is cylindrical, and so it just drops away. It's going to be higher here than it is back here. But that's, um, that's just the nature of drilling that hole down in there. That's it for this video.